I've been working here at both the Yale Medical School and the Yale New Haven Children's Hospital for 40 years. Our program when we first started was small. There was only three doctors, myself, another trainee, I was a trainee, and our boss, Dr. Chanel. 40 years later, we have over a thousand families. We have more than 40 individuals that are working in our section. We have a very diverse portfolio of research. What I think our program is best known for is our work in type 1 diabetes. We do almost all patient-oriented research where we actually have hands-on contact with patients. A general theme of all of our work is to develop and test better ways to care for kids with diabetes, starting from behavioral and psychosocial studies and interventions all the way up to very sophisticated advances in diabetes technology. We're also particularly proud of the fact that the first successful insulin pump studies were done here at Yale in our program back in the late 70s. Living with diabetes is a, is a constant, constant effort. People are testing their blood sugars up to 10, 12 times a day. Uh, they're in, either injecting themselves with insulin four to six times a day, or if they're wearing a pump, they're still having to adjust it. Even while doing that, people with diabetes don't have as good control over their blood sugars as they could have, uh, particularly in childhood. Uh, only about 25% of children meet the target blood sugars. So that means you're putting yourself at risk for long-term complications of diabetes. You're also putting yourself at risk for short-term, uh, life-threatening episodes of low blood sugar. The artificial pancreas is a device that consists of four components a glucose sensor that reads the body's sugar levels, an insulin pump that delivers the insulin, communication systems that allow them to talk to each other, and computer algorithms that calculate the insulin dose to give every minute. Our studies right now, uh, we're always with somebody uh, just for safety, particularly with the kids. For these, these four or five day studies, uh, we've been doing activities with them. At night, uh, we have them uh, sleeping in a hotel uh, with uh, a parent and we're uh, in the hotel uh, with them uh, just supervising in front of the room uh, on a bank of computers. Using the artificial pancreas made a big difference in my life because it helped me with sports, everyday activity and sleeping by always knowing my sugars and knowing if they were dropping or raising so that I could correct them and make my life easier and my sugars better. The artificial pancreas is the first system that has come along for diabetes since the history of treatment of diabetes that has the potential to improve care while reducing the burden. And that is where people are gonna feel it the most. We are working in two major studies funded by uh, the NIH. The first one is how best to treat type two diabetes in youth. We are going to follow about 600 kids in this country longitudinally. So it's an observational study, but we will follow, you know, cardiac, a, eye complication, kidney complication to see who uh, eventually will have those complications. For the first time, we are doing a study in parallel with the adult prediabetes and early diabetes. So the NIH is studying two groups at a different age. The focus of that study is to use in kids two medications very early on in the disease to see whether we can prevent deterioration of beta cell function in kids very early. We see that it's a progressive disease that slowly the, the function of the beta cell, which is the cell that releases insulin in the body, decreases over time. Honestly, I feel better about myself because I am losing a little bit of weight throughout the study um, because of the pills. And at first it was hard to take the pills because I had some symptoms, but now it's gotten easier and I don't have the symptoms anymore. I don't want to end up with full-blown diabetes and I feel like I'm on the right path. I can honestly say that I've never been more excited about the prospects of better care for our patients, again, through advances in research, than I am right now. We have so many great things going, adjunctive therapies, not insulin therapies, to get better care of type 
one diabetes patients. There's exciting things, potential in transplantation field, immunology, preventing diabetes, and, you know, of course, uh, our own personal niche is, you know, a mechanical solution using pumps and continuous glucose monitoring to not only get better outcomes for our patients, but to get better outcomes for our patients where some of the work and some of the burden is taken off their shoulders because the systems can manage their diabetes automatically. They don't have to pay attention to it every minute of the day, seven days a week.